Hello Internet, in this video we are going to be taking a look at building a really simple six degree of freedom flight controller. Um, so this is a little bit different than a normal character controller because it gives you six degrees of freedom, uh, which means not just walking on terrain, but also moving vertically in space. So you get X, Y, and Z movement, uh, but you also can rotate in three different directions. So you have yaw, pitch, and roll as part of this. Um, and it introduces a few interesting side effects that you wouldn't encounter if you're just doing a normal first person shooter style character controller. Um, one, of the, one of the problems you might run into is what's called gimbal locking. Um, and to just kind of give you a really quick example of what that is, um, it's this. <laughs> um, so this is sort of an example of three axes that we can rotate along. So imagine you can rotate along any of these sides of these squashed cylinders I have. What can end up happening is if we rotate one of these, um, like let's say we, we rotate one 90 degrees. So if we just take this one and rotate it 90 degrees, it now becomes flat with this other thing. And so our character can only rotate along the sides of these cylinders. And so by doing that, by rotating that, that cylinder 90 degrees, we've effectively eliminated one of the axes. Um, and that, there is no longer a way to rotate along this, this outside here. That, that's not possible. Um, and so this happens when you use Euler rotations. Um, so if you just are plugging in X, Y, and Z into a, a character and trying to control rotation that way, you will run into this issue. And what can end up happening is say, if you flip over vertically, your, your controls will invert. Uh, and you'll also get like just un unpredictable behavior. To solve that, you can use quaternions directly, which are four dimensional rotation things. I'm not gonna go into how they work because I don't know how they work. Um, and they're, they're really complicated. So if you don't need to know how they work, that's probably for the best. Um, but what they do is they, innate, they eliminate this problem. Um, so by adding in extra axes, we are actually able to represent 3D rotations more accurately and actually get rotations from one point to another point without ruining this representation. Um, and so what I'd like to do is be able to just fly the character around and be able to roll them, be able to pitch them up and down, uh, left and right, and then also be able to move in all, all six directions. Um, so I already have an input manager that already handles inputs. Um, I built that really quickly. It looks like this. Um, there's not anything here. It's just reading in input stuff. Um, my names are terrible, but it's fine. Uh, we're going to be referencing this and then, and then just translating this into stuff. We're not going to be using anything fancy. Uh, I'm not even going to be using rigid bodies for this. We're just going to be working with transforms. Uh, so. Let's do our ship flight controller. Uh, and so this is not necessarily something that you are going to be able to plug directly into your game. Because we're working with transforms, you'll just fly right through walls and things won't work. Um, even just replacing the transform position with a rigid body position probably isn't the best idea. You'll want to use things like velocities and things. Um, but this is more targeting some of the problems and how to get around them that you might encounter with these things. Uh, so first thing we're going to need is our input manager. So I'm just going to do a uh, require component type of uh, input manager. And so what this is going to do is tell Unity that this component requires an input manager to also be attached to the same component. Uh, and so if it isn't there, Unity will automatically attach one. Otherwise, it should just be fine and will operate normally. Um, it's just sort of a nice, helpful thing so you don't forget uh, required things because we're going to actually just grab that at the start. Um, so we're going to store that in here. And we'll just call it input, uh, lowercase i, because otherwise we'll conflict with Unity's input. Uh, we'll just assign it. So get component, input manager, like that. And now we need to be able to move in all of our directions. So this input stores two things. So it has a, let me actually zoom in just a little bit. So this is maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, so it has a rotation and a thrust. Uh, and so what this is going to do is the rotation is a vector three that's going to have uh, yaw, pitch, and roll stored in it. And then thrust is going to be uh, x, y, and z as well which are the directions that you should move in. So effectively, we can just plug that directly into our transform and it should work. Again, uh, a lot of this 
uh, with all character controls, you kind of have to tweak these values to make them feel good. I haven't done that. So this is going to look janky, and that's sort of expected. Um, you can introduce a whole bunch of smoothing things. Uh, velocities help a lot to make this better, um, but the movement may be a little bit janky or maybe doing weird things. It's mostly about functionality, uh, so, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so let's add two things. So public float uh, thrust speed and public float uh, rotation speed. And these are just going to be modifiers that are going to scale the rotation and the thrust that we provide. Um, so I am going to do each of these individually um, because when I've done this, typically things like going up and down are uh, separate. Um, so let's do this dot transform dot position plus equals. And I'm actually going to use the uh, there are like vector three dot up things. We don't want to use those because, again, we're going to be rotating in all directions. And we actually want this to be relative to our transform. So we're going to do this dot transform uh, dot forward, I guess we'll use. And this is going to be the forward vector along the Z axis of our of our um, game object. We'll want to multiply this by the input uh, thrust dot Z. So I, I've aligned these up so they should be on the correct thing. I may have screwed something up and it may not work. But it should it should work. Um, I, if not, I've done something wrong. Uh, so we'll do times thrust speed times the time delta time. Again, this is not using rigid bodies. That is probably the best way to do this, but uh, that's more complicated. So we're going to avoid it. Also, rigid bodies can eliminate some of these issues as well um, because they are, are already use some of this stuff. Uh, these position things aren't actually that complicated. Um, so we're going to we're going to just do this and get them out of the way. So right is going to be along the X axis and up is going to be along the Y axis. And that should be that. Uh, I don't know why it's highlighting that weird, uh, but we'll we'll leave it. Uh, I think it's about referencing a interface. Yeah, it wants me to reorder this. Uh, there's different ways to do multiplication that makes this faster. Uh, we're not going to do that. Anyway, um, the, this should, I guess we can test this quick, just to make sure that the movement is correct. And then we should be able to test something else. The next part is obviously the camera mo uh, movement. Uh, so let's add our ship flight controller here and just set these to one. I don't know what good values are. We'll have to check. Um, we'll probably need to increase them. Uh, but, but for now, we just need to verify that things actually move. Uh, so let's do that. So if I, if I play this, uh, I'm going to move this up here so we can see. And if I hold forward, we can go left, right, uh, up and down. Uh, so this gives us all, all three of our movement axes. Uh, it's called a six degree of freedom thing because you can rotate and move in three dimensions. Uh, and that gives you six. Um, so um, let's see. Now that we have that, we get to start doing uh, quaternion stuff. Uh, quaternion stuff is weird. Um, I, I've touched on this a little bit, but it's it's complicated. Um, effectively, they're, they're four dimensional vectors that store in additional axes for rotation. Uh, I highly recommend using them pretty much all the time uh, if you're doing rotation stuff, because that's probably what you want. Uh, the one exception is with first person shooter style controls. Uh, I actually find using Euler is typically what people expect uh, because you'll get m the more traditional whatever. Um, it's all and it ends up getting translated back into Quaternions anyway, because that's how Unity stores this. Um, but but yeah, that that's just how that goes. Uh, so transform dot uh, rotation. And we're just going to do one of these to just kind of show how it works. And then we can copy and paste it uh, with a with a test in between those two steps. I'm going to actually multiply these. Uh, multiplication with quaternions is sort of like adding. Uh, that seems weird, but that's just how it works. This operation should work. If you need to add two quaternions, you multiply them together. Um, so quaternion. And we just need to build a quaternion from 
this. Uh, so, uh, angle axis is, I believe, the one we want. So we want to take a axis, which is going to be based off of our current character's rotation, because we have, we want, uh, going back to this, we want to maintain this uh, three things. We want this to remain the same. So this idea does not change. So we want three perpendicular axes. Uh, by doing this, we can rotate in any direction, and they won't get skewed as much. Uh, so angle axis, we are going to do an angle axis based off of the rotation speed times the time delta times the uh, input dot rotation. Let's rotate around the x axis. So I've stored these as the axis. Um, so x will be rotating up and down. It will be our pitch. <laughs> um, and so let's do this and we'll plug in our this transform uh, dot right. Uh, if you use left here, it will invert the operation. So if you are going one way and you uh, use the opposite, so right versus left, you will go, instead of going up, you'll go down. Uh, you, I don't recommend solving the problem that way. Um, just keep a, a three-dimensional space and, and do that. Uh, but that will happen if you do it. Um, so there's our rotation. Now when I move the mouse up, we should go up. And when I move it down, we should go down. Uh, the camera should angle down. Uh, so let's see, let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, so rotation speed. Uh, again, because we're using mouse inputs, uh, these are actually different. But you can actually see we do go up and down. This shouldn't feel any different than it does with a normal character controller. Uh, the only real difference there is that if I increase this to 50, uh, we can go upside down and still get the uh, effect we expect. So like we're this way, uh, upside down now, and, and we're the, everything should still continue to behave as we expect it. Uh, so the next step is to make that happen for everything else. Uh, so let's copy this and paste it two more times. Uh, rotation speed, input dot y, and we'll do transform dot up. And then uh, rotation dot z, and we will do uh, transform dot forward. And so that should be all of our axes. And now when I go back here, we should be able to go up and down, also left and right, and be able to roll over. Um, so we get this. And you'll see as I do this, as I kind of shake my mouse around, we are off center. So this is sort of a difference that you'll, you'll run into because when we look up, we're actually changing the, the relative axis of all the other things. Um, you won't get this with Euler things. So like with a first person shooter, this kind of movement is not what you expect. You do not expect the person's head to just start tilting as you're playing. That's not good. Um, but here, because we're, we're controlling a ship, you actually kind of want this. Um, some other games like uh, I know Descent and uh, the, the later versions, had auto leveling, so if you left your camera like this, eventually it would automatically level back out. Um, and you can definitely do that, but you can also just use roll because we added roll too. Um, so this gives us a way to kind of move around and do all of this. We can do whatever we want. Uh, that's probably going to give somebody motion sickness, so we'll stop. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> we that isn't how that's supposed to work. <laughs> we aren't going the right way because that should be going across. Uh, again, all these axes should be uh, relative to everything else, and they're not right now. I have screwed this up somehow, and I am going to figure out why. This to transform that up, uh, transform that right. Uh, I actually think I did this wrong. I think this should be vector three dot right. Vector three dot up, and vector three. Uh, forward. Uh, I need to remember why that that's that way, uh, but I'm pretty sure that should have fixed things. There we go. We can move up and down and left and right. And then if I roll, uh, we can still move left and right. Uh, so the addition is actually adding uh, a relative angle 
onto a, our absolute angle. I, I don't know if that's the right way to describe that. Um, honestly, like I said, Quaternions are confusing, and I do not have a full grasp on them. This is sort of me trying to help uh, with with this kind of stuff because I have run into this problem so many times, uh, mostly because I, I tend to build space games and this just comes up um, and it's it's weird because you get those weird things. Uh, so don't do <laughs> that. Uh, but this is correct. So this will always work. Um, and if if we flip over, we will still go in the correct direction. So if I move left, we rotate left. Um, that is not going to happen if you're using Euler angles. It will it will invert on you, and you will start going right instead of left. Uh, weird things can happen. I actually have a video on that from a while ago that kind of goes into into the like what happens when you do this all wrong. Uh, if you're interested, I don't know how well it's aged because it was one of the earlier videos on this channel. But anyway, that is I guess six degree of freedom rotation stuff. Uh, if you want to use this in like a game or something, I highly recommend applying some of these principles to a uh, rigid body or something like that. Uh, just modifying a transform is not going to necessarily get you what you want, um, but it's going to step you in the right direction. Uh, other things to keep in mind, uh, quaternions also just behave differently. If you're going to interpolate between them, for example, you'd use a slurp, uh, which is a spherical interpolation. Um, Things like that should be considered as well when you're working with rotations. Uh, rotations can't really be treated like other vectors because you typically want them to stay at a specific length. Um, so if you're talking about facing forward, you typically want, want that forward vector to always be normalized, to always be one. Um, and if you use a lerp to translate between those, that doesn't always happen. Um, so j there's typically just extra care, I guess, you need to you need to have when working with rotations. Um, but this is one of them, and hopefully this helps. Uh, I will post some code for this in the in the description, so you can go and check that out. Uh, but other than that, I think I'll leave it here. Uh, if there's other things you want to see with this, uh, I know this is sort of the, the basics. Um, if you would like something more in-depth uh, or more complicated, uh, we'll probably do something with rigid bodies to, afterwards to get this even better. Um, but if there's something more you want, let me know in the comments and I will take a look. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. So I will see you in the next video. So until then, see you internet.